Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Tuning in, I'm Min Kim, and I can't wait to share with you how to make your hair your signature item using French brunette balayage. So this is my gorgeous model, Kate, and we're gonna get started right now by doing a profile section, separating the left from the right to keep this super easy. So we're clipping all of the hair out of the way. And I'm going to be working with L'Oreal Professionals Multi Techniques Powder with 30 volume and Smart Bond. And I'm also using a low light because she's got some previous color history, some old highlights in the ends. So I'm using landmarks as I work up the back of her head to really create symmetry within the balayage. So where I work in New York at Butterfly Studio, we get a lot of clients that come in that want something that's super elegant, low maintenance, and also timeless. So this is something I would use behind the chair to create a customized look that works for everyone. So Kate is naturally a level six, and the 30 volume is going to really help create a warm, soft balayage. And again, this is a really fast service, so we're not talking about going in and working too hard or doing too much. So really, that's the one point that I'm putting in at the back. Using our plastic to cover and keep everything protected. And the landmark I'm using on the side of her head is at the low recession, which is basically where her eyebrow is. And this is where I'm starting to see some of that previous highlight history. So my Dia Recherche shade that I'm using, which is part of the Parisian Nude Palette, is a blend of warm tones that are really balanced so that we don't have anything that looks super brassy, but is really soft and elegant. So the goal with this look is to create multi-tonal pieces that live within her natural level six. So I'm just painting the lightener closest around her face. And if you want to see the before photo, we'll bring that up on the screen. And again, the goal is really just to create something that's really soft and elegant. And I don't know if you see my little mannequin hanging out in the background, but her name is Ellie. But I'm calling her Melly because she's got the same blowout as me. And she's actually the blonde version of the Parisian nude. So Kate is the brunette version. And again, it's really about how to customize that look so that your hair really becomes your crowning jewel. So if you think about it, we can change our outfit and accessorize on a daily basis, but your hair is really something that says a lot about who you are and uh, maybe what you do or what you don't like. So for me, I like to think about how balayage is not just a method or a way of highlighting hair, but it's really a lifestyle. So it's something that speaks to women in the sense that whether you're high maintenance, you're low maintenance, you're someone that likes something trendy or more classic, it's really customizable. So the lightener that I'm using today is multi techniques powder with 30 volume, powered with Smart Bond, of course. And you can see I have some of that old highlight in there. And I'm just going to use my low light, which is Dia Richesse with 9 volume, and use that as a little eraser. So I'm looking to create balance and make the color more harmonious. So it's like singing a song together versus fighting each other in a 
Battle of the Voices. So we're going to cover the ends. So the next highlight section that I want is going to be at her high recession area. So I'm going to clip this out of the way and take half of the subsection, which is probably one inch. So this total subsection that I'm going to be highlighting low lighting on is two. And right in here I see some old highlights that I want to erase. So in between the highs and lows, I'm going to go in and look for these lighter pieces and blend them out with that Dia Vachez. And I'm using the 632 just to help blend everything so that we have really beautiful tones that work within the palette. So I want to remind everyone that I teach here at the Academy in New York City. And we also have an academy in Newport Beach. And for you guys that are tuning in, there is a promo code. So you get a discount if you register for a class using the code FBLIVE20. You can register for our classes at lpregister.com backslash balayage. And you can check out amazing artists besides myself, where you can follow me at Minkim Colorist and really figure out how to elevate yourself and your craft. So in addition to learning how to create a signature look, and really it is a custom look that is designed for every person, and the reason why I'm really working up in such simple sections with Kate's head is because her hair, the cut is very short. Well, not short, but it's one length. So there isn't a need to go in there and putting too many pieces internally because it's not really going to show. So when we talk about doing balayage, it's a really visual application where we're looking at what we have in front of us. So I see that we need some highlights. Around her face, not quite going all the way to the top. And again, you can go check out my mannequin behind me, which is the blonde version of the look that I'm creating on Kate. So again, this is multi-techniques powder with 30 volume and smart bond. And I really love how the smart bond just makes the consistency of my lightener super smooth and creamy. So if you think about your brush, your brush is really the only thing that's touching the surface. So I'm working pretty quickly. So it might look like I'm pushing very hard, but I'm really just touching the surface of the hair. So it's like doing a little dance. So you could call it more like a ballet versus the tango, let's say. Or I'm thinking something else, but I don't think I should say it out loud. <laughs> Oh, Hannah, thanks for the shout out. Hannah's super excited to watch me paint. I'm really excited to be able to share my tips and tricks on this platform. So thanks for tuning in, guys. And Becky was wondering, how do you know if you've applied enough color or lightener? So Becky is asking how I know if I've applied enough color or lightener. So because Kate has only a previous highlight history on her hair, I know that I don't have to work too hard to break through pre-existing color history. So with that, I'm really able to use my application and focus on how much lift I'm going to get based on the saturation. Thanks for your question. Selena, thanks for your question. She wants to know why I chose Dia Vachez for my low light. So I love Dia Vachez simply because it is 
a demi-permanent. It has a beautiful consistency and texture that I'm able to sweep onto the surface of the hair, and it's ammonia-free. Thanks for your question, Selena. And do you see how I'm just painting and feathering really lightly into the hairline? So you wanna remember that there is heat coming off of the head. So going back to that question about application, this is where something like that is very important, especially around the face. As I work through the mid lengths and the ends, I'm gonna make sure that I saturate. So remember, what you see is what you get. So if you have marks like this on the surface of your hair, this is the kind of lift that you're gonna get. So a lot of times I hear from hairdressers when I'm teaching all over the world, all over the US and our academies, that something doesn't work. And often it's not the hairdresser or it's not the product that is the issue, it's the hairdresser applying it. So that's why it's really important to invest in yourself and for you guys that are tuning in tonight, we have a special promo code where you get 20% off using FB Live 20. And you can register for classes at lpregister.com backslash balayage. And for those of you that are tuning in, this is multi techniques powder with 30 volume. And if you're not familiar with the product, it is a powder lightener that gives me up to eight levels of lift. So where, where I work in New York City on Fifth Avenue, there's tons of traffic, there's lots of stuff going on in the city. So we need something that's gonna make sure that we get the job done. So I'm always really specific about which product I'm using based on the scenario. So again, we're on Facebook Live. I wanna make sure that you guys aren't waiting too long for the after photos. So I chose Multi Techniques Powder because I knew it would get the job done in the time that I wanted it. General rule of thumb, Becky, thanks for the question. Becky is wondering if there is a general pattern or rule of thumb I use when I'm working. In general, I'm always imagining what would happen to the sun if you were out on the beach for a couple weeks. And with my application, I'm mimicking what would happen. So if you think about where your hair gets the lightest, it's around the face and it's on the top and through the ends. So general rule of thumb is to make sure that you're picturing where the sun would hit it. So again, we're talking about something that's timeless, elegant, and really low maintenance and natural looking. So with that, I'm always considering what would happen if I, if I was out in the sun on my own. Thanks for your question. So I want to show you. It looks like I'm pushing hard, right? But when you lift up, there's no product underneath. So it's one of the things that we teach you at our academies where it's really about making sure you're controlling your application and knowing when to saturate properly. So through the mid lengths and the ends or zones two and three, where you don't have heat, you always wanna make sure that you saturate the product more so it looks a little bit thicker. And I'm using the plastic to help protect my work and also to help protect Kate's face. So now, if I go to look at her hair, going back to that question about how I determine placement, I know, I'm gonna show you, her hair tends to fall a little bit forward. So we've got those front pieces popping. So now I'm just gonna go back in and work horizontally because I wanna erase some of these brighter highlights. I wanna make the balance come back where the brightness is coming from around the face and we're adding a little bit more depth to soften those old highlights. So again, it's super visual. I'm really taking a look at the canvas to see what I have happening. And I see those old highlights in there, so I'm just gonna section up this hair. And even with my low light, it's a surface application. 
So it's not a lot of product on my brush. And I'm just sweeping it on and letting it go. So I think people like to complicate things and overthink it, sometimes you just have to get in there, right? So it doesn't mean that when you learn something new, you go in and you do it on your paying clients, but it's really about making sure you have the confidence to just go in there and you almost intuitively know what needs to happen because you're looking at the hair as a canvas and thinking about what it is that inspires you. So I'm inspired to create something that's gonna make Kate really proud when she walks around the streets. Right? You want to create hair that turns heads and not for the wrong reasons. So this is multi-techniques powder with 30 volume. It gives me up to eight levels of lift. And do you see that? I'm not going to stress about it. Right? But do remember that what you see is what you get. So if I had left that sitting on the surface of the hair, guess what I would have gotten? A marbleization spot. Or if you're a hairdresser, that's what we call a redo. Min, why do you take horizontal sections versus diagonal sections? So the question is, why do I take horizontal sections versus diagonal? So when I'm working up the side of the head, because I'm looking to erase some of the pre-existing highlights, I'm working up horizontally because it's more visual, so I'm able to erase those lowlights or add the lowlights to erase the highlights. When I work up diagonally around the face, I'm creating movement so that when the hair falls forward, that brightness always exists. So I'm creating a flow where it's brighter around the face and there's more natural depth as you work towards the back. So the goal isn't to make her a level 12, it's really to create something that's super chic, low maintenance, and if you think about it, expensive looking. My goal isn't to have people leaving the salon where everyone's like, oh, you got your hair done, right? With like a little side eye and shade thrown in. It's really about making sure that when they come back to see me, whether it's in three months or a year, they're still getting compliments wherever they go. That really is the true testament to me. So I'm splitting this in half. And now I see a lot of these highlights in here. So let's split that in half and see if we need more low lights. So I'm just, again, taking a look at what the hair needs. I'm putting in the dark where it needs it. See that? So I'm gonna smooth the hair, hold it with lots of tension. And again, it's a surface application. So I'm breaking down some of the subsections in half so I can just paint the low lights in. And if you see, I went a little bit lower with that low light than someone that might have a lot of previous highlight history. Kate's got really beautiful, strong hair, so I'm able to take it a little bit lower. But if someone had more compromised hair sitting in front of me, then I would probably melt it just into the mid lengths or zone two. That way you're really making sure that you're able to work simply and smarter. I don't want to have 400 bowls of color sitting on my tray. The goal is not only to simplify the grow out process, but also to simplify my work habit. So now I'm just looking at the piece before and fitting everything together. So I'm doing a combination of, this is like a J hook and that's how you really are able to create that gradient where it goes from brighter around the face to softer 
in the back, so it has more natural depth. And you can see I'm moving the hair around to make sure that everything is really smooth, which creates a very, very firm surface for me to paint on. So if you don't have good tension, a lot of times what happens is the product sinks through, and that's when you get those little bleed marks and marbleization spots where your clients will go in the mirror and start looking at things, and then they start seeing things out of nowhere. And as you can see, this is a little bit finer, so the hair is separated at the bottom. But I'm not going to panic. We're just going to go ahead, work it out together. And here, I don't even really need cotton because it's plastic underneath. And this is the back of the head. I'm looking at where that piece is. So this is definitely something where you want to be present. Um, when I'm doing a balayage application, it's probably like the most relaxed I am. So it really allows me to be in the moment and look at what I'm doing and kind of create a little story, right? And the story we're creating today is how to create that signature look for hair using French brunette balayage. So we've gotten to the top and have return. And I always use my fingers to help spread the hair out to see where the natural fall is. So let's see. I want to put a highlight here, and then we'll have the color cascade and fall away. But you can see there's more highlights here, so we're going to have to do some work to erase that. And I'm using Dia Richesse 632 with nine volume. And my lightener is multi-techniques powder with 30 volume and smart bond. And smart bond, for those of you that don't know, is a bond system that we add to the lightener that I really love because it helps me to get a better result all while protecting and strengthening the hair. And Kate is such a great model because if you could see her in person, you would know that this is not a comfortable position to be in. So I just want to thank her for being so malleable and great. And this is that front piece that I want to really pop. So I'm going to go over and make sure it's saturated. Britta is wondering what consistency you like your lightener to be for balayage. So Britta, thanks for your question. She is wondering what consistency I like my lightener to be for balayage. And I like it to be really soft and light, almost like a meringue. Um, or like whipped cream almost. It should be fluffy enough where the product goes through the surface like it's not being touched. So really the only thing that touches the hair and the brush is the lightener. So my lightener here today, I actually mixed one to three parts. So I measure in grams because I use the Smart Bond. And I did 20 grams of the multi-techniques powder with 60 grams of the 30 volume Maji Creme developer. And it really gives me that smooth consistency where I can do a very soft, controlled, precise application. And even here. But if you're new, don't do what I'm doing because this is a very soft touch. So it's a dry brushing technique where basically I don't have anything on the bristles and I'm going over the surface to move the product. So now I'm looking here 
And I think we can just put a couple pieces in there and work with the low light. So remember, it's not about putting in four million pieces. It's really about working with the canvas and the haircut and the style. And Kate has a one length haircut. So if I went in there and did 500 subsections, it wouldn't show anyway. So I'm connecting this with the piece underneath in the back. And you want to make sure that the brightest piece is around the face. And again, that's so that we're mimicking what would happen to hair naturally. So I always like to say that when we were kids, before we had jobs, and we went on vacation all the time and had summers off, this is what would happen to our hair naturally. But as we grow into adulthood, or hopefully, you have a job and you're not in the sun all day unless you're like a surfer or a lifeguard, in which case you're really lucky because then you truly do get sun-kissed hair. But if you want to learn how to create it, we have a special promo code on Facebook for all of you that are watching tonight. It's FB Live 20 and you get 20% off when you register for a class. So to register online, you can go to lpregister.com backslash balayage and that's where you can come learn at any of our academies in New York or in Newport and if you recall the way I section this out in the back top of the ear to the profile parting and I did one piece on the perimeter and again, it's one length, so I don't need to go crazy in here and work too hard, although there's nothing wrong with working hard. It's just when we're talking about balayage, we're talking about a really easy, graceful method of application, which really kind of translates into the lifestyle, right? So your balayage client isn't super high maintenance, hopefully, they may be. And there's someone that really is looking for something that's more elegant and gives them time between appointments. So for all those hairdressers that are like, oh my God, if I have someone that used to come every six weeks and now they're only going to come every three months, every six months, what do you do in between? I always have my clients come back in for a gloss service. And that's what I love about Deolite is because it's an acid-based color, it helps to shut down the cuticle and also give you a ton of shine. So I don't know about you, but no one minds having a lot of shine. Ashley is wondering how long this would typically take you behind a chair. So thanks for your question, Ashley. She wants to know how long this would typically take me behind the chair. So I would say behind the chair, I would charge this as a full head with low lights. And this would probably take me 30 minutes, including mixing. Thanks for your question. So now let's take a look. I'm going to sneak a low light in there on the corner. And that low light, for those of you tuning in, is Diabrachez 9 volume. 6.32 and this is the brunette version of the technique and if you look behind me there's a beautiful mannequin and she's basically the blonde version so what I love about what I'm showing you today is that you can customize it to work on one length haircuts longer layered haircuts Maybe it's just a piece of the technique that you're seeing that you can incorporate. This is also great to do with a global color. So if you have someone that's coming in for a single process, it's another way to add on a service to really help customize that look to create that signature look for that person sitting with you. So I don't know about you, but I'm not into creating robots where everyone looks the same. 
I want to have variety and really make sure that every single person that comes and spends time with me walks away feeling special. So the French brunette balayage is a wonderful way to really make every guest walk out of your chair feeling like a million bucks. Kristen, Kristen wants to know how to avoid holidays. When you place your highlight on the planchette, like how do you saturate both sides? On the planchette. Mm -hmm. So Chris, Kristen wants to know about saturation on the planchette. I always make sure that when I'm working within the planchette that one side is clean. So it's a little bit of organized chaos. So I'm constantly moving the product away from the right side where it's basically going to be dry. And as I'm sweeping the lightener on and working through zones two and three, I'm moving that planchette so that the, the lightener underneath doesn't really saturate. Thanks for your question. Metal wants to know why you're working in horizontal and vertical sections. How do you decide? So Meadow wants to know how I decide if I'm working in horizontal on where I want more of the blonde to pop. So the lighter pieces around Kate's face are gonna be on the, or around the face. And because there's previous color history where some of the highlights, when you look at the before photo, there's highlights that are brighter in the back of her head versus the front. So really I'm doing some rebalance work to make sure that this looks super effortless and is really easy on the eyes as it grows out. Thanks for your question, Meadow. And Michelle wants to know, how big are your subsections? So thanks for your question, Michelle. Michelle wants to know, how big are my subsections? So because if you look at the haircut, this is the top layer. It's really a one length haircut, so I'm not looking to go too crazy. And the last time Kate had a highlight was probably nine months ago. So her hair's grown out. It's just enough where there's some highlights in there that I want to get rid of. So I'm really creating about two inch subsections. And if there's low light work that needs to go in, I'm taking half of that. So it's about a one inch for the low light. So this is the half. I'm going in here, I'm gonna check what's happening, and we look good. So I'll flip the hair back down. So Lauren wants to know how you uh, ensure that you completely prevent any marks or bleed lines when you're using your balayage tools. So Laura wants to know how to prevent bleed marks. I would say my first piece of advice would be to invest in education and make sure that you're learning as many best practices to ensure that your application is on point. After that, you want to control how you're doing your application with the amount of product on your tools, whether it's the brush or on the planchette. So, my planchette might look a little crazy, but it's really just a thin layer of lightener that I'm able to pick up off the surface. So I'm always working where it goes from thick to thin. So when I pick up the lightener, I have a controlled amount on my planchette. And here, I feel like the left side of her head had less highlights in the right. So we're not gonna need to do as much low lighting work. So I'm just gonna take a peek and see where the pieces are on the other side. So what I really love about this technique is that whether your base is dark or light, it's something that you can use to incorporate behind the chair right away. So if you want to get your practice in, you're lucky because if you're watching tonight, you can save 20% off 
using code Facebook Live 20 for one of our classes at the Academy. And they're two day programs. You learn lots of techniques, you make new friends, there's all sorts of cool things happening. And you can also register at lpregister.com backslash balayage. So here, we're just adding pieces where the sun would hit it. And I bet you some of you are wondering why am I doing that? Where I go up? To be honest with you, it's like my little weird tick. Um, I have a pretty light touch. So when I go over the surface from the bottom up, it's just to make sure that the product is on nice and smooth. So for you beginners, start top to bottom. But for me, it's just faster to sweep right up instead of picking up the brush and working from the top down. So now I'm looking at what I have on the other side. And I'm also going to take a look at where these pieces are in the back. So everything is going to fit together and tell the same story and not compete. And you can see Kate has some like baby hairs here, but they're like the texture is a little bit thicker. It's not like super fine. So I'm going to make my life easy and just get these out of the way because this isn't going to make my life easier. It's going to make my life harder. So for the purpose of this application, if I look at where the points are, those guys don't really matter. So bye bye. And my lightener that I'm using is multi techniques powder with 30 volume and smart bond and I really love the consistency that I get so I prefer the texture of like a meringue or a whipped cream and depending on the texture of the hair that's how I'd make the adjustment but if I ever find that I'm working too hard to make something come to life then usually it's the product that's off. If she wants to know is the product on your so Becky, thanks for your question. She wants to know if the product on my planchette ever dries out. Um, if I put it down and walked away, it might feel a little dry, but because I'm constantly working it over, this does stay wet. But that's a great question. Thanks, Becky. And you can see I'm going back to the planchette. So once you start working, if there isn't enough product, it's not gonna magically appear. So you're eventually going to have to go back. But that's why I like to keep a decent well on my planchette. And it helps me to stay organized. So organized chaos to really help get the job done. Now I'm going to break this up. Hi Annabelle. So the formula I'm using for tonight on Kate is multi techniques powder with 30 volume, all with smart bonds, and Dia Richesse is my low light, and that is going to be 6.32, which I made by mixing 532 and 732, because that's what we had here, and 9 volume. So I love the consistency and how I'm able to just sweep it on. And it really allows me to do my job easily. So this is my French brunette balayage. And before I put plastic down, I see the hair moving. And this is the beauty of having proper tools. I'm just going to use the cotton right there to prop the hair out of the way. And I'm going to cover with plastic. And voila. So let
let me show you what this is eventually going to look like. This is Kate's blonde twin, and I'm Min, the styling twin. It's been so much fun sharing French brunette balayage with all of you. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to use the promo code FBLIVE20 to get 20% off your class when you register. And I'm sure the website is going to go across right now. So it's been fun. Thanks again. See you soon.